Uh, Yagan Guli, appear before me now. Yagan heartened, because that's what Ragnar says in the things. But I would say that my mums would let me watch it. And uh, here we go. Guli's got to go. Yeah, do you remember DVDs? Do you remember DVDs? Um, 1991, Guli's born by John Carl Buckler, who had, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so we're just going to go with that. Done the special effects on most of these films. Troll, again, you see this is Vestron, Empire, but again, part of the era. Now, Goody's Go to College is the third one in the trilogy. It's been an unusual one. I suppose it's more of the completest in me, simply because I did do the, uh, the first two. Ghoulies 4, I'm debating. But anyway, here we are, Ghoulies 3, because this came out in 1991. It's a 15 certificate, and I was 15. Aha! So, what does my mum have to do with it? Well, you see, I was very impassioned to see this film, having seen the first two. Being a big reader of Fear magazine, it had that whole set of frat house japes. Most people had said in the reviews that it's just really gone too silly and that it's really for people who just want to see TNA. And 15-year-old Rob went, brilliant! Uh, none of my video shops had it. It even was something I looked for when I was 18 and I was able to join a video shop of my own. Um, Halcyon Days, the one oh, the other side of the blockbuster. One side, you know, it's, a, it's a thing that you did once you got your own passport and or driver's mm -hmm. license. I did see this film in, I think, when I was in my 20s. Um, why is it a thing? Because I sort of realised at that point, video shops were closing down. At this point, 2000, 2001, when I found this, everyone or loads of video shops was, were closing down, selling all their VHS for a pound. I just graduated in film, so I was just hoovering up loads of VHS, ostensibly to be a better film person, film cineast, some of which I got around to watching, but like many collectors, spent so much time buying this stuff, going around all the cash converters, very rarely saw it. But I found this in the bin. Yes, ironically enough, I found Ghoulies 3 in the bin, the VHS bin of a corner shop, which also tucked keys and mended shoes. As such, I bought it. I'd heard good things about it in terms of, you know what, it's ridiculously silly and there's a lot of TNA. And um, so I did watch it in the 20s. Now, that itself was about 18 years ago. Watching the film now, it's ridiculously silly. Uh, there is some TNA, and um, I've not got a problem with that. The plot itself, ultimately, uh, John's gone for having like three different films, all of which could have been quite good, but he's decided to just splice them in at the same time. One is a romantic relationship over uh, the lead prankster of this place, whose pranking is basically ruining his relationship with a very sweet young woman. And if he has to choose really between pranking or being a committed boyfriend and looking at his relationship and his college life in the future, which is jeopardized by his pranking. But of course, you've got to understand, he is the master prank. I keep saying pranking, it's called yanking. I, I'm not going to use that term because no. Um, so that's one film while she keeps going off with the alt right Andrew KS kind of guy. There is some sort of notion that um, the good guy is in the more diverse uh, college place because the guys are all kind of cool and fruity. Um, it keeps referring to the others as Nazis. And um, yet, yeah, when you go to their frat house, uh, aside from Jason Scott Lee, there is a certain element of I see white people. There is one massively overweight guy who I must say to John's credit, they never make jokes about his weight. They just let that sit there while he folds up a pizza and eats it in one. That is lovely. Likewise, Jason Scott Lee's character is never really the butt of a gag, although he will fulfill the stereotype when he finds that his stereo has been destroyed. So that's film one. Ultimately, He's able to become a prankster and win his girlfriend back. Film two is um, the the romance itself, I'd say there, is the pranking itself, rather. So that's the romance guy, the pranking itself. Sight jags, they've given security guard a moped kind of thing that he's supposed to be going around with. The frat house film. 
the kind of film where, oh, all right, our, our interest is ultimately pulled out by his girlfriend uh, while he's holding a topless nymphette who happens to have an antlers um, stag head sort of stuck to herself. Like that doesn't happen. Like my ex-wife, who I mentioned in the second one, has absolutely no right to any of the comments. It's in the litigation. I think you'll find there was an NDA involved in that. Panty raids obviously happen in this. Hey, did I mention that there's some TNA? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, again, I'll just call in the litigation. Of, hey, you know what? It's a feminist trope because the guys do not succeed in raiding anyone's panties. In fact, they have the uh, indignity and humiliation and I'll totally talk their place while their trousers are pulled off them as topless uh, university girls uh, hit them with pillows. Yeah, the horror. So there's that film going on. Uh, Nap explosions and general frat housing. Um, that on the one hand you go, oh, it's great toilet humour. But it's not. I mean, the problem is John's taken every slapstick gag that he's seen. The best ones are the ones that are subtle, uh, where he's actually put some thought in. The others, he's unfortunately just playing the hand too loud. It's like a comedian laughing, at, not just at their own joke, but as they set up the joke and during the joke. Nice touches being the security guard, who's obviously a lech, but yet has to wear women's underwear. Plain story. Uh, and of course, the uh, university blonde is relatively... Strong. It's a shame that she's killed off while in the shower and naked. Uh, shut up. She actually shows rot. What's the best way to put this? I mean, obviously, I'm middle aged, I'm not a mum. But ultimately, Ronnie, she actually shows some agency of what she wants to do. This isn't some ditz who everyone is just going to shag. She's quite, if anything, maybe predatory and calculating. But that is still some sense of intelligence in and of itself. The third film, which is the film we kind of came in for, is The Goddamn Goonies. Now, The Goonies come out of a toilet, hence all the jet gags that come in, become almost a frat house in and of themselves. Hey, did I mention TNA? And steal most of the beers. He's gone for the Three Stooges, which is great. But again, he hammers it so hard. It's hard to get much of an attempt on themselves. There is even some attempt at some sort of mythos on supernatural logic on this. The Ghoulish Tales magazine, uh, Supernatural Toilet. How is that there? And how has it been 21 years since anyone sat on that toilet and happened to find that magazine in this frat house? I don't know. Professor Ragnar, a name itself, with full of supernatural connotations, could have been a phenomenal villain. Uh, very much in the way of the decapitated professor in Reanimator. But it just doesn't gel. Ultimately, uh, my main memory of the film was much better than this. It's it's a tribute to John. I think the I've got to say that the effects in terms of what he's trying to do with the Ghoulies really works. Now they are genuine puppets. Uh, little um, sudden costume changes for them to help distinguish them all. The fact that they've only been able to afford one animatronic, and that's Rat Ghoulie does hold up the deaths are quite shocking and you know he has tried to come up with something a bit with a bit of gravitas but then unfortunately he shoved the custard pie all over it and hey did i mention there's some tna and there's nothing wrong with that because it's 1991 it's a 15 film and it's goodies go to college having said that i do have to mention this because while i consider and go oh Paddy raids are oh, it's an empowering blood who can sleep with who she likes, who are wearing antlers heads, and I think my wife should ex wife should just leave it be. Or that, you know, the uh plunger shink, tongue pulling gooly violence is so cartoony that you should be able to enjoy that as well. I do get that it's gonna put people off. It's not as strong as Ghoulies 2 in terms of a story narrative. It is a load of slapstick. There is a Beavis and Butthead element to it. I feel that John, and I say this because sadly he passed away, um, really did put his all into it. Whereas really what he should have done is just take one thing and stick with that. 
So is it enjoyable? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Doesn't doesn't really hold on to your attention. I don't think it really intends to. Hey, did I mention this DNA? Hey, look, Fish Ghoulie's just eaten someone with his tongue. Um, but it's humorous enough. The one thing that I would criticise is that at the end, you should have been able to choose between being a prankster or being a girlfriend. He shouldn't have got to be both. He should have handed it over to his best mate. Because again, there are those elements where he has a bromance, drama and fallout with his bestie. There are moments of genuine drama, but it's just drowned in a morass that seems so scattershot. It's less than the sum of its parts. So Goodies 3, you know what? Stick it on, have a few brews, and it might be interesting to yourself. I know that for someone of my demographic, I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't know if I'd recommend it to anyone compare, comparatively, considering Ghoulies 2 is out there. Uh, quick shout out to Ghoulies Unflushed. Guys, you do a great job on that. Um, of course, I, I don't like, like, subscribes. And, um, hey, I'll see you in the rentals.